Was geht ab, Alien Savages? Und willkommen zu einer weiteren Episode. Good old. Lass uns reden. Ah, I'm feeling grounded. Ah, let's feel how we're feeling. Lass mal durchfühlen. Let's take a deep breath. Fully exhale. Yes, I'm feeling grounded. This feels really good. Oh my God, do I have a deep appreciation for feeling grounded in my body. <laughs> yes, I had a good night of sleep and I actually feel grounded. Like, mm, I know this feeling. This is what we call grounded, meaning safe in my body, like reality is happening through me, is feeling really good. And this is what I took for granted <laughs> most of my life, because growing up, being grounded isn't wasn't an issue. Because let me tell you, actually, grounded will be a bitch for many people waking up. This is my prediction. That many think, maybe, who are like in the matrix, in the system, that they're really grounded, but from my point of view, they are not. They're just dense. They're just dense in the system but as soon as they wake up a little more they're losing their shit so <laughs> grounded will be a big bitch for many people so that's why these podcasts are really important that i documented my whole journey after ayahuasca so many people can watch that in months or years to come and connect to what helped me because i'm actually really good at grounding it's just that i'm holding a really high vibration And this will happen to all of us that are coming along sooner or later. So buckle up, my friends, and sit back because we're in it for the long run. And for that, we gotta be grounded or we're, we're out. Or we're like setbacks, you know, where we like brush it off and fall asleep again. But I woke up and I refuse to fall asleep again. And then the waking up just continues. So grounded is really something to take seriously. So that's why I talk about it so much. Because maybe some of you are watching and, oh, but my friends, they're like in the system and they're all so grounded. Why do I struggle with that? No, they are not. They're not at all. They're just dense in the system. And as soon as you like blow their minds more and they like choose to wake up more, they're losing their shit. <laughs> Oh boy. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you think I talk about it so much? <coughs> I have to say I really love these podcasts. Like doing them on a every single day basis, daily. I was thinking to maybe shift one English, one German, because many of my German alien savages are like, What about us? My English is not so well. And also in German, I'm just, I would say, a little funnier. And maybe a little deeper because it's my mother tongue. But now that I speak about it, I really like sticking to English and making this like a safe space where I show up for you having your back every day. It's every day, bro. Jack Paul, really inspired by him. Like he is the goat. He... If you don't know Jack Paul, I really have so much respect for him. He's like me, a rebel, a problem child, but on a way bigger scale, like way bigger on the people he reaches. And the amount of hate he gets on a way younger age and being able to hold it, I bow down with deep respect and worship. Jack Paul. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, he won another fight yesterday. Like, he's just disrupting the whole fighting industry. And, yeah, like, it takes system disruptors that are able to hold the hate. So, this is like an ayahuasca ceremony, so we can all perch in the comments and talk shit about me because I can hold it. Jack Paul can hold it. So then we can have it there, being held, look at it. 
and this again is a safe space where I don't just bounce it back like read nasty comments and destroy you. No, hmm. this is not what I'm doing. I'm responding with love and I actually see you brother and I actually see you sister. I know exactly where you're coming from or sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but I do my best to connect from the heart, like show compassion. So we can collectively look at it and rise up together. No soul is left behind. And this doesn't say like, I'm the leader, I'm better. No, this is like, my heart is open and I want it to stay open. I don't want another psychedelic trip that shows me, oh, opening the heart is the way. Why don't you stay on this vibration? I want to remember that. I want to stay hard open to everyone. Like if you're taking ayahuasca and you're on the floor over your bucket throwing up and crying, all you want is brotherhood, is sisterhood, is family, is telling your loved ones how much you love them and people you hurt how sorry you are. This is all you want to do. And then you get sober again and you choose to fall asleep. I refuse. Because then it's a cycle where I need to keep taking psychedelics to be reminded. I want to stay in this vibration. And I'm going to continue doing my best. Staying hard open. Let's take a deep sip. Mm -mm -mm. All right. I have a lot of notes. How exciting. Many of your comments so mean. Aua. Aua. Yeah, aua. Yesterday I had a really rough day. Yesterday was one of the roughest again emotionally. <coughs> like now I can brush it away. Like I'm feeling better. I'm healthier. I'm grounded. And I can stay on this vibration. And from this vibration, I want to keep sharing vulnerably that yesterday was a 9 out of 10 from the pain hour 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 because I really stayed hard open and I allowed all the pain to feel it it was really rough yesterday number one was about Britney like the breakup is like still so hard for me like my heart just like wants to run to her you know tell her that I love her and just like being in each other's life like it's so hard that this got like taken away and I, again I'm not putting myself in the victim role no I like you can say what's the cause of the breakup I take that I take the L so I'm just sharing my feelings that it hurts and it's it's so nice to validate each other's feelings not, but you're wrong. You're, yeah, who cares? Shut up. Can you validate my feelings? Because I'm validating how you're feeling. And there doesn't need to be a story. I don't need to tell you what's right, what's wrong. I can just like sit there with you and hold your hand and show compassion. Sympathy. <coughs> and yeah, it is really rough. It's really hard. Mm. And then, of course, Higher Self gives me exactly the movies that make me realize even more. I watched the movie Spaceman yesterday. It's a uh, Netflix original. It's really good. It maybe doesn't look so exciting visually, this guy going in space and missing his wifey on this big mission and then realizing how he fucked up her to sacrifice for the mission feels like same as me hello i'm on my alien mission and didn't care about people too much that i like left them behind and now realize like oh the alien mission i don't care about it if i leave people behind what i care about is walking side by side the company that's what matters the most it's like is it the destination or the journey yeah of course it's the journey it's the climbing but even more, it's who are you climbing with? Who's your gang? Who's your squad? Who are your friends? Side by side. That is the biggest. And mostly, we, I came to realization 
after losing it, how much this means. So now, from this point of view on, I will never let any of my loved ones down, no matter if the climbing is slower or I need to carry them. Like Sam carried Frodo. I may not take your burden, but I am able to carry you. <gasps> this is friendship. This is like my favorite scene. Goosebumps. Like how boring would it be if Sam just takes the ring? I do it for you. Throwing it in the fire. Boring. Friendship. Wow. Mm -mm, let's take a deep breath while I blow my nose. So yeah, the movie Spaceman, I recommend it. And really watch it hard open. Because it's really about the emotional reality. Especially my man. We're just catching up on the emotional intelligence. I feel like most women watching here what I'm talking about now, they already discovered when they were 15 and they're happy, all the women watching, that finally men are catching up, that I'm getting it too. And all my fellow men watching, I feel like we're growing pretty much at the same time. Because no one told us. Like most men, most adult men, their maturity, talking about emotions, is of a little kid or max a teenager. And now what we're doing here is heavy lifting. This is actually divine masculinity having emotional maturity. Whoa. And it's so easy to bypass that, to brush it off. So easy but so lonely. Because once you have been together with a real woman, you are nothing else. You don't want to be quote-unquote with little girls again. No front to little girls. It's just I grew so much and of course I want someone on my level. <coughs> so I could say, Thanks, Britney, or screw Britney for getting me so level up because now this is my standard and of course I want to be met there. Because emotional maturity, oh my God, speaking about depth of connection, feeling good, feeling safe. Whoa, there are levels to that shit. And you hear it in my voice. I mean, not just my voice, how I carry myself. You can feel this maturity. Watch my old podcast just a year ago or more. And it's great. You have to be a boy to appreciate that. Like, I couldn't skip being a boy. And uh, don't get me wrong, I'm still pretty much boy. That's why this breakup was so important, because I need to be boy in all the ways to... Level up without skipping frames or I wouldn't be fully integrated. But yeah, what I'm saying, I love the fairy that was fully boy. But also I don't want to be that anymore. I don't want to become a man child. Because I've been that. And it's great. But then it gets boring because I've been it for too long. Let's take a deep sip. Fairy is back. Yesterday's podcast was rough because I was really sick. I was listening back to it and my physical mind was like, this is trash. I can talk so much better. I didn't even elaborate on most things. So I'm proud that I uploaded it anyways. And I'm happy I'm back. I'm feeling way better. Let's take a deep sip. So yeah, yesterday emotionally was really rough. <coughs> and it was mostly Britney, but not just that. I was also regarding my family. 
And my family spoke me a boundary, which I'm doing my best to honor and respect that, to not speak about my family. So this is uh, probably the last time I speak about my family. And I'm just saying that this also was really rough yesterday. I'm not going to say what. I'm just saying it was really rough, really rough. A lot of crying, like a lot, a lot, like nonstop. And then Rich helped me because he also went through a really dark time. And he was like, Ferdi, you get to a point where you can cry forever. But then, like, again, discipline, healthy masculine, or whatever you want to call it, or you can even not like it. But it resonates with me. Set yourself a timer, like I'm going to cry now for five minutes. I cry it all out, but after five minutes, I'm just going to stop. Because if you're like really opening your heart and looking at your shit and staying there, there are moments where you can just cry forever. And then it's nice to have those permission slips that I just named. Like, okay, I'm going to cry now for five minutes, but then I'm going to stop. <clears throat> so, yeah, this helped me. I was crying a lot. So then I, I walked to, or I drove to Inner Walk to walk. If you don't know Inner Walk, it's built by my good friend Floki, who also built Wonderland. I talked to you about it in the other podcast that Inner Walk is a walking meditation where you just walk back and forth. It's this big platform with a high ceiling in beautiful nature, and it's for free. You can come 24-7, and you can just walk back and forth. So nice. I love this island. And I love Floki that he just built that. And he actually did it a whole year, every day for four hours. So yesterday I just drove there and did it for like half an hour to just shake this off, this phone call I did with someone of my family. I just shaked it off. Oh. And then it also really helped me to connect to my chosen family. Like Richard and Vicky and Floki. And then it like extra hurt that Brittany right now is not available for me right now because it's so important that you have chosen family of people who actually see you of who you are on a soul level are able to hold you and then are actually showing up for you and I'm so blessed for like those I just named Richard, Vicky, Floki Brittany even though she's not available right now and so on. But those helped me yesterday. And and some of them texted me, and this is really powerful. Like, this really helped me. I'm going to read it to you. All we can do is keep our hearts and ears open to others and let their words flow past us like rivers without needing to drink from their realities. We can only love them and accept them for who and where they are without opening their storybooks. This is how we will shift this world, staying open but strong, especially with those we love most. Showing up as examples of the highest love until they are able to surrender in safe connection. Whoa. Yeah, this vibration, right? Cheers to chosen family. Let's take a deep sip. <coughs> because in the past, having like a phone call with someone and they were just accusing me, no problemo, because I emotionally bypass. It's not affecting me. I see through it. And now I still see through it but my heart is open and I want to stay heart open, meaning I show compassion. I emphasize with them, meaning I actually step in their reality bubble. And my, my third eye is open since 2020, so I see it all really visual, actually, that I'm with someone on the phone. I see their reality. 
that they need to justify their feelings. So this has nothing to do with me, actually. It's it's their stuff. But I st- and now I step in this reality on an emotional basis. And then it fucking hurts so much. And then body's like, huh, disassociate, disassociate. Oh, oh, oh. And I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I stay in here. Oh, but it hurts so much. Out, out, out. I think I can hold this because I love this person so much and I want to connect and be here. <coughs> but then you have to save yourself in order to like save and help others. So that's why uh, this message, like, screenshot it. I, 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 while reading it, I, I showed it to you visually. Screenshot this. If you're having a rough time with family members, loved ones, whoever, this is a good mantra to keep in mind. Like, I couldn't talk now about it, but the words just carry so much weight and are self-explanatory. Wow. So, moving on. Talking about inner walk, I'm going to commit two, three days inner walk for one hour starting today. Today is Monday in my reality, and every Monday at inner walk, I think even Floki does it, at noon... There's an introduction of how inner walk works. And even though it's really easy, like you walk back and forth, they're actually nice introductions that you don't like look around too much in nature, but just have like an empty gaze in front of your feet and how you move around that you don't make it too distracting, like all these things. And for me, even though I already know it, because there's also a YouTube video, I just want to go there as like discipline to like, okay, I'm onboarded, I showed up, And now I'm going to walk for an hour today. And my plan is for the next days. So today, tomorrow, and the day after, walking for one hour. And of course, I'm going to report back. So let's see. Because I get so much synchronicity that I fucking got to start a meditation practice. And sitting still is hard for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can be on my scooter and listen to German rap. No problemo. But it's like getting to a point where I actually need a meditation without music and without distractions. Walking is fine for now. Maybe it will shift then into a sitting meditation. But this is really what I get so much synchronicity. And I'm a little afraid of it. <laughs> Why am I afraid of it? Yeah, I can let that fear go. Because I was afraid of it that it makes me like too ungrounded because I'm already so in spirit. And I feel like those distractions help me to stay here and also not go so deep maybe. Uh, then this is where I want to go, you know, it doesn't make sense. So I, I release this fear, deep breath, fully exhale, deep inhale. I release control and surrender to the flow of love that will hear me. Yeah, I think it's just the physical ego mind freaking a little out because when I actually meditate, kind of, it gets so DMT-like. And don't get me wrong, I love it, but also that grounded being such a challenge for me recently and I'm committed to this timeline now, like I want to stay here. My ego is a little like, what if we fly away? Higher self's like, duh, you're not going to fly away. You're just a little afraid that I take up more space. Exactly. Can we still listen to German rap though? No. At least uh, ayahuasca music? No. At least wearing one airport because it's looking cool? No. <laughs> <laughs> Who says I'm not funny in English? Well, I'm getting there. <laughs> That's why I also want to keep those English podcasts going because I'm I'm really getting in the groove of speaking English and finding myself in it, meaning I already am, but it's quote-unquote maybe a little too raw that I want to put in more of my swaggity-waggy coolness 
flair, color of who I am in a more fun way, you know? Where it's like still authentic. And in German, like I can do that really well and I'm getting there in English too. So we're in it for the long run. Moving on, back to my list. Let's take another deep sip. <coughs> yeah, I just want to comment that I really didn't like how the visual turned green wearing the pinkish shirt yesterday. If you watched visually, I put on this pinkish shirt at some point and the whole visual turned greenish. Don't like it. So no more pink shirt. I then tried some color correction, but this was a disaster. So yeah, I'm still a little perfectionist when it comes to stuff like my podcast. That it's just like because what I really like is consistency. That this is a safe space, and the stuff I talk about is pretty advanced stuff. And in order to make this a crowning safe space, we gotta have consistency. That. This is the same setup. So when you click on my podcast, it feels familiar. You're dropping in like, ah, I know the background. I know Ferdi. He's wearing a different shirt, but not so much else is different. He is starting the podcast the same. He is like, there are actually a lot of things that I can talk now forever that just feel good in your body. And I'm doing them intentionally because I want to create a safe space. Because, yeah, I want to stay reachable and I also want to stay safe that I'm getting downloads these days that uh, I feel like would be a little scary so I'm not necessarily sharing them like if you want to hear one of those downloads go on Instagram at vegan strengths and look into my bio I put it right there yeah those kinds of downloads I'm getting a lot recently and I'm like okay this would just make people I think unnecessarily ungrounded I'm already being on such a high vibration that I don't need to speak about these things. I just carry it and I can speak more about my life and my emotions because this is actually crowning and the vibration I carry already transmits all this other stuff. Let's take a deep breath. <coughs> and yeah, I'm definitely he's qu quitting smoking. I haven't smoked the last days, but I want to get rid of this cuff. Like, this is not just releasing. This is like, my lungs are like, you're paying the price for smoking so many cigarettes and pipe. I get it. It was necessary. Was it? I mean, it was all right, but it was fun. It was fun like this. Because otherwise, if I'm crowned like now, I would never smoke cigarettes. I would never, so I'm so fucking happy I did because this was so wild. Like, Brittany was laughing so hard. We were sitting on the balcony smoking cigarettes. She was like, the realities we have gone through in this timeline, from you being the most judgmental vegan, where you, like, look at me if I touch a little bit of something, to no smoking cigarettes. Like, what has happened? I'm like, damn right, baby. <laughs> An audiobook that is also safe that I want to recommend to you is from my good friend Elizabeth April. Also check out her YouTube. Her YouTube is maybe quote unquote no, it's still safe, but it, it's like it's talking a lot also about aliens, shadow government, lizard people, reptilian shapeshifters, all these things. So but like be open minded and see where it goes because she is as we're all really connected to source and one of her superpowers is she's so crystal clear in remote viewing. Wow. So she channels a lot of good stuff that is like really accurate. Like I really give a lot of trust in her word because I can feel the vibration and I follow her for a long time so I can recommend it. Like my word actually carries a lot of weight. I only recommend things that are actually legit. She is. And the audiobook from her or book, I'm listening to the audiobook on Audible. It's called You're Not Dying, You're Just Waking Up. And it's really good. I'm at the last hours and it's actually really, really good. Because we're not the first one that have like been awakened 
and she's really far in the game. And what's great about her, she's a human. It's not Bashar, who is not a human. So he's not embodied. He's like a semi-physical Sasani. Sure, listening to Daryl Anker interviews is great because Daryl is pretty, uh, like Daryl Anker, the channel of Bashar, he's pretty embodied. Like he's in a body. He's, he's crowned actually a lot. That's what I respect about him so much and really humble. And same for Elizabeth April. Like she's in a human body. So listening to her about all this stuff is really crowning. Let's take a deep breath. <coughs> yeah, I feel like there's a lot of releasing on this podcast. I usually don't need to blow my nose. But I had a feeling I'm gonna, so I put a tissue right here. Because I had a feeling. Trust your intuition. So yeah, check out uh, her audio book or book. You're not dying, you're just waking up. It's really good. Okay, moving on. Three masks. Public, first mask. Friends and family, second mask. Private slash secret, third mask. Yeah, or, uh, um, I think that's the Japanese saying. But you can also say that we have three lives. One life that the public knows, like here, what you know about me, like in my podcast. And I actually blend those three masks like hardcore. But yeah, we're all having like a public life when we go out in public that everyone can see. And then we have a third life. Uh, I'm sorry, we have a second life that is like we don't share with public, but we share with our friends and family. And then we have a third life or mask that only we know, like our secret life. Okay, now the question is, why do I talk about that? Ah, uh, yeah. Because I'm actually blending those three really well. Like, And it's not like, this is not the goal. No, it's great to have those three. It's actually great and it is authentic because, listen to this carefully, People need to deserve to hear your stories. Can they actually hold you? And what I'm doing here, like sharing so raw my emotion, uh, emotions, is fucking advanced stuff. This is like really new earthy. This is not so much seen yet. And not just sharing my emotions, like sharing them during the process. Like the last week while I was on the verge of psycho psychotic shock. I was sharing. It, it was maybe a little too advanced, <laughs> where I was also like, oh my God, this is so much to hold. Like then also reading your messages, people trying to get in my head. So I'm not necessarily recommending that. I only recommend it if it feels good. And often it's great to process something first and then share about it when you already can tell the story and feel grounded in who you are. What I'm doing is like, and I'm not saying like, I'm so special or powerful. No, this is just, this is also maybe me being like an attention whore. Like, I love their attention. Yeah, yeah, of course, this is also coming in. But again, why is that my excitement? Because this is what I'm meant to do in the timeline. It goes hand in hand. But I'm not saying this is like, this is so admirable. This is also like, I want validation. Brutally honest about that. So... I forgot my point. Yeah, yeah, what I just said. People need to deserve to hear your stories. Because sometimes you like, maybe also have a psychedelic experience. And then you tell people in the matrix or your family and they just give you shit. And you're like, oh, I wish I wouldn't have told you my story. You cannot hold it. Now I need to like shake this off. I need someone, like, like I'm already full busy of processing what I just experienced and I need someone that I can tell that and they can host me in that so people need to fucking deserve to hear your stories and that's why when I sometimes read comments that are nasty and I'm at a low place I'm like fuck you why do I put myself out like that do you even deserve to hear my stories like that because I hate it when people someone is down or or Owning up to something like, hey, I was owning up that I heard Britney. Oh, now we can use this as an excuse to kick him out. Let's all kick him. And what is happening? Like they're all 
feeling like permission to purge their own shit. And then no one is doing it viciously. There are no toxic people. It's just they got that fat somehow. They have that in them and then they want to get it out and they don't know how. They're looking for help. So that's why it takes like us light warriors, us star seeds, alien savages, however you want to call us, to be these lighthouses, to actually hold that so we can create safe spaces for other people to purge and rise up together. And that's why in my last podcast I talked about all these things so much. Like before I was sharing about ayahuasca and my emotional stuff, I was sharing about being a starseed in the timeline. What does that mean? How important it is to be resourced, having your safe space where you can retreat, find your core, be resourced and out of your core, out of your center, uplift others and hold others. And don't not get to a point where you're drowning in it. This is so important to get, my friends. And this is my kink here. Like, I know I can hold this. Like, sharing raw my emotions in the process of it and still being able to hold it because I'm actually so good at resourcing myself, knowing who I am. That's why right now it's so important for me to live alone, wake up in my own energy. In the morning, I listen to... Elizabeth April, her audiobook. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. This helps me. Yep. Listening to music, making everything nice. Like, yep, yep, I'm in my power. Okay, now I feel suited up. Now I tap into the comments. Okay, this is where the people are, like you are that I reach. Okay, okay. And now I feel ready to talk here. But also hard open. This is like the challenge. Because it's so much easier to whoop, be unreachable again and talk from high above. No, 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 I'm going to stay here because I can hold it. Okay. That's why, like, I have a lot of respect for live streaming because it's another level. But I, I want to I wanna do that too. <laughs> that's, why, that's why also retreats were so tricky for me to find out this, this sweet spot of, oh, this retreat is going on for too long. I'm getting tired. I'm getting sick. I'm not resourced anymore. And people need to go out in the world to integrate. So I learned it all often the hard way <laughs> and now I'm finally at the point where I'm like whatever I'm touching I want to make it fucking sustainable you see these podcasts why can I do them every day because I, I crew so much that I know how to make things sustainable because I have done so many things where they were falling apart or more often than not I was running away because I couldn't hold it uh, it's like I can help everyone yay oh I'm drowning I need to run away. Exit, exit, exit. I'm losing myself. <laughs> Let's take a deep sip on that one. So yeah, for myself, I actually merged those three masks, those three lives, public, friends, family, and private slash secrets pretty well. And if there are things that are private that I'm not telling you, it's either because... It's about other people and they are not feeling comfortable, then of course I'm not gonna talk about it. Like my family, they spoke me a boundary and I'm gonna respect and honor that. So I speak less about my family. That's the one reason. And the second reason is I don't wanna give the haters too much fuel because, yeah, I got suited, like a lawsuit against me. No, more often than not for just ridiculous things and I'm like fuck you then I'm not gonna share like specific details that could end up in another lawsuit fuck you so that's why some things I'm also not sharing these are basically the to two only reasons and the third one would be if I'm actually in a deep deep process and I don't feel ready to share but for me the funny paradox is actually that by sharing it, it helps me. Because by the time also I release it, the podcast, I, I re-watched it. And I'm like, I mostly already get it as I speak it. And speaking it helps me. Because I know, I know myself enough in who I am that what other people comment back, try to get in my head, whatever, is not going to fuck with me to a point where I actually be like, uh, 
I'm doubting myself. And don't get me wrong, I do doubt myself, but I'm not getting to a point where I actually, actually go back in the deep fear of, oh yeah, I make you my fake source connection. Tell me what to do. I fly back to Germany. I go in the fear. I follow you. <laughs> no. I'm like, oh shit, I'm doubting myself. Chosen family, support network, reaching out to Richard, other people, oh yeah, meditating on it. Ah, this is the fear. Knock, knock. Hey, buddy. You want to buy this shiny watch? Oh, it's, it's, it's so shiny. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're just trying to sell me a bunch of shit. Like, this is how fear tries to convince you. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to listen to this person. This person is right. You need to go back in the fear. You need to go do this and that. Be a good boy. And I'm at the point where I can see fear from the outside and see it's just paper thin. It weighs nothing. Fear is an illusion. It only gets weighed when we buy into it, when we choose it. But we can see through it and then just let it go. And I'm saying this like this, as if it's easy, and it's Champions League. It's super tough. Oh my God. And every day, fear wants to come in in all the ways. We're living in such an unsafe world. So it's a never-ending story for right now. It's just remaining in your center, staying resourced. Like These things are really important. So ask yourself, do you wake up in your own energy where you feel reality is happening through you? This is who you are. And before you interact with the world, it's coming out of a place where you feel subtle in who you are. And I'm not saying you need to live alone, but do you have like your partner, your family that supports you? And do you have enough space to create it? Like, do you have a solid morning routine maybe where you practice mindfulness, where you come in this vibration so you can stay in this vibration? Oh. And that when you come out of this vibration, that you are conscious. Oh, I'm out of my center. I'm out of alignment. I'm out of mindfulness, whatever you want to call it. And know then how you can get back into it. Like yesterday after the call, I was like, Whoa, okay, I need to shake this off. What are the permission slips? And sitting down, mm, there's too much energy in my body. So I drove to inner walk and I, I walked for half an hour, hour and I shaked it off. Oh, okay, now I'm back in my center. Now I can operate from this vibration. Now I can go to Anna. She did a healing session with me last night. It was beautiful. But it was out of her energy where I was pretty grounded in myself. Not like, oh my God, save me. No, 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 no one can save you. You can only save yourself. And I'm here holding your hand because we're doing it together. All right, this was my turn of the sharing round. Now it's your turn in the comments down below. Let me double check. Yep, I went through all my notes. I really like this episode. Yep, feels good. I'm finally like getting healthy again and grounded. Like, yeah, can I get a hello there? Shout outs to my friend. Ralph Smart, a.k.a. Infinite Waters, because his mantras are so on point. All right. Thanks for listening. Until next time. Peace out.